a cut a record. One I feel day. better already. <laughs> I'm feeling good now. Okay. Conference we just had. I this was one of my favorite uh, hymns, and it's number four. To God be the glory.
They're following her because she's following Jesus. They're attracted to her. They're attracted to Sheena. We love you, Sheena. Sheena in the Philippines. Sheena's got the Holy Spirit. Daniel. He is. He's wonderful. He's a blessing. He's a blessing. You know, there was a time that Daniel was a heathen. Did you know that? You got to get him. One day he'll give his testimony. Amen. That's good. He was. Oh, hi, Dar. I'm Owen. Is going to.
advantage of that one. I'll tell you, if you're a Christian, you appreciate this song. He hideth, he hideth my soul. 340.
Amen. How marvelous. How wonderful is my Savior's love for me. You all know those words, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it thrills me to see some of our folks uh, learning the old hymns. I noticed yesterday when uh, if you hear it, you'll hear the testimony. I love it. <clears throat> this is Pastor Carrie Miller, a resident, the Sunrise Senior Living in Colorado Springs. I've been here about a year and a half. I've never been more blessed in my life by the Lord and all those around me who minister to me. <laughs> All those who are seeking, along with the staff, to make this the best senior living facility that we know anything about. And I want to say to you, before, if you're interested in a place to live as a senior, if you're retired or for any reason, you need a facility like this. I want to say, and this is not a paid commercial. I'm a satisfied customer. Check us out. And if you don't, if you don't agree with me, you come and give us a thorough examination. Spend a little time with us, and let us show you and share with you our experience. And I think you'll know why I say. Don't miss the best for the rest. <laughs> you say, well, I don't know. I don't live anywhere close to Colorado. Well, that's an easy fix. That's not hard to fix at all. Don't worry about the little details. The Lord always opens the door when the Lord is in a decision we make. And we know we can trust him because he wants, he wants what's best for us. So today we seek to share with you, because we don't have little children here, a message that makes it clear to all of us that from the time a child is born, even before he's born, or her, Either one, the Lord loves them and has a direct interest in every one of them. Now we have children and grandchildren and great grandchildren, those of us here at Sunrise. And uh, I recently uh, had the joy of during the wedding that my grandson just uh, shared in, <clears throat> in the main ceremony by my oldest. <clears throat> and dearest <clears throat> preacher friend, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I want to say, my son Keith is not my oldest son, but he's the oldest preacher's son that I know. Is that clear? You know what I'm saying? He's the best, and I mean that literally. If you want to call somebody to tell you about what's going on and why he wanted his dad to be, in Sunrise Senior Living here in Colorado, he'll tell you, he'll give you a testimony. And I thank God for him because he just performed the wedding for his son at Crested Butte, Crested Butte, Colorado, out in the wide open beauty. And I mean literally the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And I have all the pictures and the videos 
of that wedding was perfect weather. I mean, it couldn't have been ordered any better. If I had wanted to say, Lord, I wish you'd do this and this and this and this, it was already ahead of time. The Lord had all worked, already worked it out. They didn't know it. Keith didn't know it. His son and his new daughter-in-law didn't know it. But the Lord had already been at work. Now I say that to make a spiritual point. If you're a believer today, God's already at work in your life. And Paul says he's able to hear our prayers as he writes about the mystery of Christianity. And he mentions that more than once. Now it's a mystery and I wouldn't seek to explain it. I, would, uh, I wouldn't even begin to try. And I've said this before, God's ways are not our ways. He tells us plainly in scripture, and I'm quoting directly from him. His message, my ways are past finding out. So I just save myself time. <laughs> so I'm not going to waste my time trying to find something that's, and understand something that's past finding out because the author's already told me that I'll never understand it until I get to heaven and meet him face to face. Then he's going to confirm to me why he wanted me to believe in him first. Because the first begotten son of God and the only one who became flesh and dwelt among us, God himself, by the power of his Holy Spirit, was at that wedding. And I'm telling you, if I saw anything more beautiful in my life, I've forgotten it. I can't remember it. So that's the spectacular way God works in our life. And I was glad that my daughter-in-law, who may think this old man, you know, is kind of eccentric in what he believes, I want her to see the evidence that all things work together for the good of those who love them. According to his plan, his purpose, by his power. Now, all of that precedes this message from Matthew 19 about the little children. The first song I ever learned in Sunday school as a kid that I remember was, Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Huh. Well, that takes care of that. You know, I don't have to worry about those that are born who never enter life here, but their spirit goes to be with the Lord. And I'm going to tell you why I believe that in a minute. I'm going to show you in scripture why I believe that to be so. Sometimes I think when a woman and a father lose a baby at birth, and the doctor comes out and says, I'm sorry, but there was a complication. And before they even hear it, they begin to weep. And I've been there with them. I know what I mean. And I mean what I say. I've experienced that moment with those parents. And I'm happy to say to them that baby has the best babysitter in the world. You don't need a word. It's all taken care of. God made a plan for people like this baby before the foundation of the world, and he'll fulfill it 
and we'll understand it. Bye bye. If we'll wait on the Lord and be of good cheer. That's what the Bible says. Now, I want to read to you one verse in the New International Translation, the NIV. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. Now they were doing that and this is the occasion of the action that Jesus takes. He rebukes them. It was, it was love. I mean, he didn't scold them, but he said, I want to show you right off the bat how I feel about this. People say, I don't understand how a loving God could do that. Let that baby die. After all the praying that Christian mother, daddy, I thought about it as I sat there one day in the waiting room, waiting to hear the good news. Either way, it was good news, you know. I know that sounds a little ridiculous, but for a Christian mom and dad, either way, it's good news because they know that God has made provision and he wants the best for everybody concerned in that situation. Now, this is a lot of heavy truth for some people especially if they don't believe the Bible. Maybe they've never read it. Maybe they never even thought about it. They said, preacher, that's not fair. I don't even have a Bible. And that could be the case. Or maybe if they have one, they've never read this verse. Now, I want you to notice this happens early in Christ's ministry as Matthew records now you think about Matthew, it's a great gospel to start with. Most people want to start with John. I like to take it just in the order they appear in the King James book. You know, so I, there's a reason for that. I mean, uh, it would be like saying first and second Timothy, you know, you'd read one before the other. Well, if you read second Timothy, you read the end of the book before you get to the beginning. So it's put first Timothy and second Timothy, and God reveals it to Timothy, the young preacher, to show him how he works. How he shows them what he wants them to preach. He gives them instruction, and the apostle Paul is the messenger to Timothy. You get it? Our pastor has a way of saying that, and the whole church says, got it. Instead of saying amen, we got it. <laughs> He's the first one I've ever heard do that. And uh, when he came about 25 years ago, I thought it was great because he got their attention. If they started thinking about something else or playing with their iPhone or something, they, would, they might say, uh, man, I didn't get that. I need to go back and listen to that. Well, if they'd been listening, they would have gotten it. So he said, you got it? Got it, Pastor. I hope you'll be that attentive as we continue this message. Do not, do not, I say, Why is the Lord so concerned? You say, well, these are just little children. They're not even 12 years old. They're not old enough to be confirmed yet. Well, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jesus is speaking to those children that were attracted to him. Now, look, they didn't go out and say, if you'll come to church, we'll have ice cream cold. 
you come to church next Sunday, and we'll have some cookies. We have cookies every Sunday before we have Sunday school. And study the lesson. You know, we try to get people in. See, Jesus was the attraction. Come unto me, all ye that labor and everything. That wasn't a commercial. That was an invitation. That wasn't a paid advertisement. Well, I'm going to take my children to Bible school, but they give out goodies. My kids like to go. We have to give, we have to give people goodies to get them. That's true right here. I get abused. It's Sarah and others who prime the pump, so to speak, for the promise of fuel coming. Help us today in our class. Go have some cookies I just baked. Mm -hmm. I'm, Sarah's going to forgive me because she knows I would put her down for anything. But beloved, Jesus himself is the cookie. When he becomes, as I said last Sunday, the thing we love most, not the world or the world's way, not the things of the world, but when we learn that the things of God, there's nothing to compare. Nothing to compare with the word of God. People, people all say, you know, people don't go to church or hear the Bible anymore. I said, who told you that? Back when we were looking for people to come and help people find a place to sit down in our church up here in Aurora and had to build another building. <clears throat> people were telling me, well, you know, uh, parents just won't get up that early to bring their children. I said, you come to our church next Sunday and you'll see little children and we don't have enough beds and enough room and we're fix fixing to build a new children's building <clears throat> to make room for all those young children that are growing up. We want them to know what the way how the Lord feels about them. He loves them. He's interested in their well-being and knowing him and having eternal life. He said, how, how long shall I wait till I talk to my children? You should already be talking to them. If you have to ask that question, that means you have started. So just take my word for it, take God's word for it. The Lord is interested in everybody. Red, yellow, black, and white, as I said, they're precious in his sight. You see when a child learns that song in the beginning of class, he knows the most important thing there is. When you talk to your neighbors or friends, do you use this approach? God loves you and I do too. And so I want to tell you about my experience with the Lord. Oh, yeah. You do it when you buy a new soap or a new food that you've never used before. And you go over to your best neighbor and your best friend and you say, you know, I just bought some of that new soap. And I think you ought to try it if you haven't tried it. That bothers a bit. Well, what's wrong with saying, you know, I just found the Lord. And I know the Lord, and I want you to know him too. Because you're my best friend. I sure want you to go to heaven with me. I'd hate to think about being there without you. And where do you start? With your husband? Your wife, your children, your grandchildren, the people that are dearest to you may not be the nearest. They might live in another state. They might live across the 
the water somewhere, maybe mom and dad are stationed in the military and you won't see them for several months. You know, back, this may be a little strange for a preacher, but it hit my mind this week. Love the one you're with. And if you're not with the one, you just love the one you're with. Love the one you love most. Now, now if you do that, you're going to get in trouble. See what I'm saying? If you don't have the one you love with you, just love the one you're with. We called it free love back in those days, remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah, boy, I can show you a lot of broken lines. Because, well, that was the thing to do. Now, why would I, why would I bring that in? You know, we make some of the silliest excuses for not doing the simple thing. Silly excuses. Silly things like those people we read about. That did go to the dinner. Oh, I married a wife, I can't come. Well, bring her with you for heaven's sake. You know, if you have one, you don't have a husband, and get a lost friend to come with you. You ought to try that. That's a good way to get somebody to hear the gospel. If you have a pastor that you know is going to give the invitation and Preach Jesus every time they get in the pulpit. Say, boy, you come to church, you want to know how to become a Christian. My pastor will tell you. I guarantee you, before he closes, he's going to tell you to turn from your sin and your sinning and turn your life over to Jesus and trust him to do what he said when he said, I'm standing at the door knocking. If any man will open the door and let me come in. I'll come in. I'll accept the invitation to come in and we'll sup together. Now, Jesus is not going to come into a dirty heart because he's pure. He's holy. He's set apart to the service of the Father. And he said to me in his word, be holy as I am holy. Oh, my friend. You see, it's all in there. It's like that prego sauce. You know when they had that, that advertisement? Prego. It's in there. You want that piccani sauce? It's, it's in there. It's in there. You need to say, uh, Come to our church. He's in there. I promise you he'll show up next Sunday. It'll be the most exciting experience you ever. I want to go out and say, well, our preacher, he's kind of dull and dry. He never says anything practical. You know, he, he doesn't preach to help us with the problems that we have right now in our nation how to pray and how to plead with the Lord to be merciful and forgiving to all these wicked people and to bring them to their senses. And, and you know how you bring people to their senses? By bringing them to the scripture. Thy word, David yes. said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. And that's a simple solution. You fellows that are listening to me on Zoom, some I have listened many times, and you've tuned in today, or maybe you don't hear this the day I preach it, but when you turn on the Wi-Fi and receive it on YouTube, on Messenger, on Zoom, like some of you did today, as we started broadcasting. See, this is a live 
experience. And they have allowed us the privilege to share with you. Isn't that a wonderful thing that a facility like this in a nursing home allows an old worn out preacher, 91 years old, to come and share what, what God's taught him and what he's learned. And I'm so grateful. I hope they, I hope they listen so they know that I'm telling the world that we're not trying to keep it a secret that Jesus loved the little children. And don't wait till you get our age and waste your life when you could have been blessed all those years. See? If somebody had told you as a child, like my parents told me, son, you got to have Jesus in your heart. The Bible means a whole lot more to people when they read it for the first time, if they've accepted Jesus first. So I, I just, as we used to say when we were kids, I just double dog dare you to try. <laughs> just double dog dare you to try Jesus, man of Galilee. Oh, man. Little did they know when they said Jesus, he was born at Nazareth, you know. <laughs> Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? A little Mickey Mouse place over there. Why would God come to a little place like that? Because he wanted the world to know that he could just start the truth with these little children and pretty soon they'd be hearing what he taught later to go into all the world. Just a few months later, he said, this is my commandment. Not a suggestion. To go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I wonder how we're fulfilling that today. Do we need to be reminded once in a while? The main thing. I wake up every day thinking about that. I heard a preacher say that one day in Springfield, Missouri, at an evangelism conference. He challenged us to go to our office and write on a card or something. He said he took a three by five card out of his file and wrote down the main thing. Slipped it under a glass, like we have on our dining table up there. He slipped it under the glass. He said, when I go in every day, I see those three words, the main thing. You know what the main thing is? If you're a believer, it's being a fisher of men. Another little course we said when I was just a, I mean, not even big enough to think about reading yet. And my granddaughter, she was reading to me at three. And she'd get to a word, she'd look at it and sound it out. And she said, and I called her mother one day. I was staying in their home during a revival in my son's <coughs> church in Eden, Ohio. I said, you've been teaching this girl, and she's reading to me at her age. I mean, some pretty big words. And I was impressed. And I said, when I got home, I told my wife, I said, you know, Children understand a lot more than we believe. And boy, they take notice of it. You know, so they'll pick up certain little words they shouldn't say because they heard what daddy said. <laughs> boy, they pick them up and they spread them around pretty quick. Well, I hope I'm getting this through today. Because mm -hmm. so Jesus said, of such is the kingdom of heaven.
I'm going to give that some thought and close it now. The kingdom of heaven, this translator said, I hold it in my hand. I found this yesterday in my library that I bought with me. It's about this wide. My whole life. Out of, I lift the name. Out of over 3,000 volumes of books in my library, all by the Dewey Decimal System with the card file telling you how to find them, all the numbers on the back, including this Bible. This is the New Testament, not the old Bible. Pretty small print. This is the second binding since it was due. 1966, it was rebound by the one who gave it to me, my wife. And I wanna, this is personal now. If you don't believe me, you come up after the service and I'll show you what she wrote. To my favorite preacher, Doris, with love, still there. The ink, she wrote it with a big ball kick punch. Some of you can probably see it from where you are. To my favorite treasure was love, Doris. Wow. And my dress. And she had it rebound in 19. 66. My address was 6954 Southwest 151st Street, Miami, Florida, 33158. I thought if I lost it, better than return it. Mm -hmm. Now, here, the New Testament by Charles. B. Williams. He's Charles B. Williams. Why did I want this so much? Because Charles B. Williams was a Greek professor at the seminary from which Doris and I graduated. And this is the finest Greek to English translation. I have ever read. And I studied it. It's still available on the internet. And I defy you to find a better one. And I sure am glad he was my teacher. I used to take this to Greek class when I was translating from Greek to English. And my professor would say, Carrie, you can't do it any better than Charlie did. I've underlined, I think, something on every page of this novel. Most of it with a red pen. And I opened it up yesterday and I said, I can read. I can read it again without my glass. Couldn't believe it. I hadn't even opened it. I don't know how many years. And I, I used to get it in my briefcase. That was my my backup if somebody wanted to argue with me. So let me tell you what the original language said. Here's a translator right here. It's dear lady. She knows what I mean. I am personally acquainted with Jesus and what he said because of Charles B. 
Williams, Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary, the largest seminary in the world. And I have to be privileged to study it. And you know what this translator said? Stop permitting the little children from coming to me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And except ye come as a little child, ye shall in no wise enter the kingdom of heaven. How does a little child come? I'll let you, if you have children, just think about that. Mama, could you tell me how to do this? Mama, what's a mama gonna do if she doesn't know what to tell that little girl, that little boy? If she's ever had the experience, if she's ever read the scriptures, what's she gonna tell them about Jesus? You see how important it is? In this day, this difficult day, this dark day, division, dissension, even in church people. Let's say nothing about politicians, and leader of nations. Do you know what's wrong? They won't listen to God. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Now the quickest way to start forgetting God is just take him out of the classroom, the Bible study groups, the pulpits of America, entertain them with contemporary stuff. When you go to church, are you entertained or are you edified? Are you built up, like Paul said, building up the body of Christ? Let nothing be done through strife or, or vain glory. But in everything you do, let each one esteem the other person better than themselves. Don't talk down to anybody. You accept them and say, friend, I love you. Let's get together. And let's just study and see what God really says about them. And praise the Lord. And give thanks at everything. All those little two-word admonitions I looked in here and I have a red circle around right in the middle of a chapter or in the middle of a sentence. I'll have a red bar. My son said, Dad, why don't you just buy a Bible and underline everything in red? I said, well, because only the words that Jesus told in the New Testament should be underlined in red. But this is my Bible, I can mark it any way I want to. Somebody said, oh, don't desecrate it by marking in it. I said, let me tell you something. I'm gonna do anything I can to help me believe. Things that God gives me as I study are in the margin. I've run out of room on most pages. So I had to start getting bigger Bibles and bigger margins. And some of you in the back, I think it's this one and my, my Phillips has several just plain leaves with nothing on that you can make your own books. I encourage every person who came to I serve to bring a notebook and a pen and a Bible. 
And you know, most of the time they weren't looking at me while I was preaching. They were looking down, writing down the things that stuck like a dagger, like a two-edged sword, the Bible says. That's the way God's word cuts through. Cuts to the quick, right to the heart. My, you know what the quick is? The most sensitive part. You say you cut your fingernail off to the quick. The dentist, he goes in there with a drill and say, oh, get too close to the nerve. I need some more Novocaine. Some of these people have to kill on a preacher. They go, oh, oh, I can see it. It's funny. Oh, and they'll raise their eyebrows and roll their eyes. Oh, boy, I got him there. You know, you, you see a bunch of dogs running down the road. You throw a rock. You know, which dog's going to hollow? One that got hit. Hit dog always hollers first. Now, if, if, this, if this message is bothering anybody listening, I want to encourage you. That's good. That means that God is still dealing with us. And even though it looks like we're looking in the world right now that God, God must be dead or just doesn't exist. I can understand why people would question when we talk about a God of love. I'm in the invitation now, so you don't realize that. But I've been telling you more than once today that all you have to do is realize you're a sinner. Repent, that means turn from that sin, make a U-turn and come back and begin to follow Jesus and trust him as your leader and guide and the one who has all power to keep you and forgive you. And the Bible said that God will let your sins as, as are scarlet be as white as snow. That's what God will do for you if you'll let it. Let's pray. Father, we come today humbly, earnestly, simply we've tried to share as simple as we go on. Lord, I thank you for every little child that I've seen come, for every young person for the whole life in front of them before they wasted it and made bad habits and started this and started that and started something else. Doing what everybody's doing, doing what the world's doing. I'd hear them say to me, Lord, preacher, it's a thing, man, everybody's doing it. Well, I've learned that that's probably the thing you better leave alone. Because the majority are not on the narrow road that Jesus talked about. They're on the broad road. So that's the last person I want to follow. Person that doesn't take God seriously. That doesn't take what he's taught us to be the best way. And if he wanted the best for us, he'd tell us. Forgive us, Father. Forgive that brother, sister, that young person who may hear the message and say, well, preacher, I've just never heard anybody in my life. So today I've heard for the first time. I mean, I just wasn't listening. But I'm going to turn my sin, myself over to him. Forgive my sin, Lord, and I am. And I want to trust him. Change me. 
begin a new work in me and make me a new creature. And Lord, do this for him, please. I'm rejoicing already with those who will receive you, even at the end of this message. Maybe even now as we pray. Hear our heart, Lord. Open the door. I give you permission. It's unlocked. Come on. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We look forward to the next lesson, Lord. Teach us daily that we need the living bread every day. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. Like the woman at the well. I was thirsty, drinking from a well that would go dry sometimes. But now I want to drink at the fountain. I never shall run dry. Because Jesus said, if any man shall drink of the water that I shall be, said, I shall give him, it shall be to him like an artesian well. It just never runs dry. We can trust you, Lord, teach us that. Don't let the devil lie to us like he did to Adam and Eve when all this trouble started in our world. In Jesus' name we ask you. And for his glory and his sake. Amen. Thank you. Tune again in. Tune in again, if you will. We invite you. We try to make it simple. But we sure want what we say to be supported by scripture. It's not what Carrie Miller said. It's not what Carrie Miller thinks. Who's Carrie Miller? I never heard of the guy. How do you know you can trust me? How do you know I'm not some weirdo that just made something up? Try it. You might like it. Love you. Jesus. They weren't singing about themselves. They weren't singing to draw attention to themselves. They were singing to draw attention to Jesus, the good shepherd, the savior of our soul. And Father, I pray that tonight, as we pray for all those who are listening around the world and who will be listening in days to come, Father, if they're not one of the flock, I pray that they will come home and say, Lord, you call me, I want to come home. And Lord, I know you're forgiving and loving and you ever live to make intercession for your people. And through the Holy Spirit, you said that you would, <laughs> you would never forsake us. And you said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. So Lord, we ask them to ask you to come into their heart and cleanse their heart and change their heart and make them a new creature in Christ. Make them a part of the family of God. And one of those lost sheep, maybe of the house of Israel, that you speak about in your word, Lord, that they'll come back to the Father and to the fold. Lord, we don't know tonight who will be listening, but you do. And we know you have a way of speaking to hearts and drawing people because you said no man can come unto me 
except it were given to him of my Father. So, Father, we're asking you to draw them unto you, to draw them through Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, and to bring them into the fold. For we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Plus, is going to lead us in a hymn of invitation. I hope as Jesus speaks to your heart, you'll listen. You'll listen. The writer of Hebrews said to Israel, Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Harden not your heart. We're singing 520. 520 is the song, is the hymn we're going to be singing. The pastor brought it up in his message, and it's a wonderful hymn. It's, Oh, That Will Be Glory. for you. God bless you. I hope to see you again next week. Say hi to all of our friends overseas that we remembered in prayer tonight. God bless you. Amen. Carmen, Mary, Sheena.
tell you it's happy when you mention his prayer.